Law enforcement officers have been struggling to counter the violent crime that's just plaguing cities across the country. And for Atlanta, this could lead to its breakup. And that's because many residents in its wealthiest neighborhood have just simply had enough. But is that enough to actually succeed? And what does it say about us that some think it's better to part ways than fight challenges altogether? Senior National Correspondent Steve Osinsami has that story for us. It's another busy night in Atlanta Get on the ground! where the crime is getting in the way of sleep. Put your hands up! Get on the ground! On the ground! They're calling it a COVID crime wave. He's got a gun! Let me see your hands! With more violence and more thieves. Get the out! They're splitting that gold one, still doing donuts though. On the weekends, for example, police here are busy trying to keep up with wannabe race car drivers with nothing better to do. Seen here blocking the road to a hospital emergency room. The problems are absolutely city and nationwide. But for many who live in Buckhead, the wealthiest neighborhood in town, this rising crime has become grounds for divorce from the city. Do you feel that the city of Atlanta cares about your safety in Buckhead right now? Absolutely not. Eliana Kovic is a healthcare worker who lives in the neighborhood and says she's all for a new effort to carve out a piece of Atlanta and start their own new city with their own police. I've lived in Buckhead in a long time and for the past year and a half, I've been terrified everywhere I go. She says she started feeling this way after this terrifying evening with her boyfriend at a Mercedes dealership nearly two years ago. Around nine o'clock at night, we were we just went grocery shopping, and we were dropping off his car for a service appointment the next morning, and we were literally waiting on our Lyft driver to just come pick us up, and then this person approached us. You can see them in this surveillance video that police collected in the investigation, where they're under attack by a man with a knife. Police say that he was a repeat offender who was arrested just days earlier in another county and was already back out on the streets. You just being a white <laughs> record that <laughs> home. How injured were you each? We both had concussions. I'm assuming in that moment you worried that this was where your life was going to end at that night. Yeah, I thought he was going to kill us both or rape me or something. It's the kind of story that Bill White likes to share. He's the leader of the Buckhead City Movement. They've already raised nearly $2 million. Ambassador. With donations from as far away as Australia and Bangladesh. They're trying to bring the issue to a vote this November, and only the people who would live in the boundaries of the new city would get to decide. When somebody is shot on a jog on Saturday here on West Wesley Road, or someone is shot shopping at Home Depot on a Sunday afternoon in the Garden Center. Getting off Windsor Street. Fast and Furious, live on the Buckhead streets. People say enough is enough. But these are also Buckhead streets. High-end stores, country clubs. Elton John has a home here, Oprah used to, and Justin Bieber was famously house hunting. These streets just aren't that mean. And that's according to police who report that overall crime in the neighborhood was down last year. The Buckhead people are right that violent crime is indeed higher, but it's still a fraction of what's happening in other neighborhoods. You know, one of the hard things that I have to do uh, is address the perception and what people feel as it relates to crime. And even if this part of town left, it's not like they could put up a wall. Absolutely. Over here. On the other end of Atlanta, Glenda Mack is offended by all this worry over Buckhead. A bunch of well-to-do people who think they're just so... <laughs> ah, entitled. Entitled. Just so entitled. And here our little communities, you know, we hear this gunshots all the time. Police still don't know who killed her 12-year-old grandson, seen here on her front porch shortly before he was murdered nearly a year ago. The family searched for the boy themselves, and when they found his body, he had been shot nine times. It's a boy. Do you need an ambulance? Somebody shot you. Yes, somebody shot you. 
Everybody liked David. His grandmother says she takes comfort in this cell phone video from a few years ago, where he's wishing her a happy birthday. Happy birthday to a lady who is, is worth more than gold. You hear the complaints about crime in Buckhead, and it sounds to me like you don't understand what they're talking about over there. I don't. I don't understand it. That's all I could hear when I came here. Buckhead, it's Buckhead, 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 Buckhead. They kind of ignore the rest of us. It is not unusual for rural or even suburban communities that don't belong to a city to join up with one. My own neighborhood in suburban Atlanta did just that. But it is unusual for a neighborhood to leave a city. And those kind of fights usually end up in court. And nearly every major city in America has a Buckhead. The residents here are only about 20% of the city's people, but they cover about 40% of the city's bills. It is a significant amount of the tax base. For these reasons, this would be a destabilizing movement for, for the city of Atlanta as a whole. Even the Republican lieutenant governor believes it could hurt the region if Buckhead left the big city. I think businesses would, would, would look negatively upon uh, the separation of those two areas. Uh, and I think it would actually make the crime issue worse. The man who's the face of this new movement is a wealthy fundraiser who only moved to Atlanta about three years ago from New York. Bill White will tell you that he doesn't tick your usual boxes. For example, he moved here with his husband. And here's Aretha Franklin singing at their wedding. He's donated money to politicians on both the left and the right. And he reluctantly admits that he was famously here at Hillary Clinton's election party in 2016 before heading across town later that night to celebrate with the real winners of the vote. And this event... The people fighting against him say that he just wants to hurt Atlanta because it's run by liberals and that he's carrying a torch for conservatives still trying to deny the truth about the last presidential election. Essentially, do you believe that Joe Biden rightfully won the election here in Georgia? Yeah, I think, I think that's a trick question because um, I don't think it's relative to Buckhead City. I think absolutely we are focused on fighting crime, getting our garbage picked up, paying less taxes. Many believe he's targeting Atlanta because it's largely African-American. Those feelings were underlined when he reposted and then deleted these comments on social media from a website that features prominent white nationalists. People were asking why was he following their account in the first place? Bill White is a racist. Bill White has said racist things. He's done racist things. He has consorted with other racists who were saying and doing racist things. And in the context of Buckhead separating itself from Atlanta. He's engaged in a project that is fundamentally racist. His critics say that it's no accident that the residents of a new Buckhead city would be more than 70% white, surrounded by the birthplace of Dr. Martin Luther King, that until recently was majority black. White says in no way is he or this movement racist. People have called you racist. Yes, they have. People have called the people who support you racist, right? You've definitely heard that. Who are African-American and who are African-American businessmen, people, it's the wrong thing to say because, you know, calling somebody racist for wanting to lower your taxes and get crime under control is very interesting to me. Thank you for that question. Atlanta's new mayor says he's working overtime with the support of the business community to keep his city together. I'm uh, fighting this tooth and nail, making sure I go out every single day. We caught up with him right after he opened a new police precinct in the neighborhood he's trying to keep. What would Buckhead leaving do to the city of Atlanta? Yeah, what Buckhead leaving, this uh, divorce of Buckhead from Atlanta, would be an unnecessarily expensive one for both spouses in this divorce. We have a lot of parks and things that are city-owned property. It's going to cost them. It's going to be alimony if this happens. The issue is now at the Georgia State House, where the majority of lawmakers are Republican and are often cheered at home for throwing elbows at the city where they work. And it must be said that not a single state lawmaker who represents Buckhead or the rest of Atlanta is for this. If they let this get to a vote this fall, again, state law says only people in the neighborhood get to decide. Eliana Kovich believes her neighbors would vote to leave. And Glenda Mack across town says that sadly she believes they would too. You can't just focus on one place. 
And that's what I want everyone to know. And our Steve Osen saw me join me now live from Atlanta. I tell you what, uh, Steve, Glenda Mack pulls at my heartstrings. You know, she was a, a, a very powerful interview. You know, she underlines that, you know, lots of people across town have frustrations with the crime that's happening here. And it is almost a year ago to the day that her grandson was killed and police still haven't found her, the, the, the murderer. And this incident, the murder, the shooting happened just outside a police precinct in Atlanta in her part of town. It's just, it's a shame. And, you know, Steve, just listening uh, to Bill White, um, someone who I've interviewed in the past as well, you know, he, of course, he denies being racist, but it's hard to ignore the history of Atlanta and the demographics in that area. Let's just talk about the significance uh, of a role that race clearly plays in this issue, Steve. Well, it, it, it plays a significant role, and I want to underline something for people watching this right now. You know, I have lived in this town for going on 25 years. You and I go way back when you used to yes, live here. Do. You lived here for a number of years, right? You know, yes. your, your children were born here, if I have that right. Um, Absolutely. You know, I love, we, I love we Atlanta know, and the history. Yes, we both know this issue. We know this city. We know that this is the, the birthplace of Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, the city that is too busy to hate, a city that is largely and has long been majority African-American that has succeeded in so many ways with a black leadership. And so having the one of the widest parts of town leave this city does, of course, bring up the issues of race. And, you know, when you look at the city of Atlanta, the city of Atlanta is about 50 percent of the city's African-American. But the Buckhead population is 77.5 percent white, 11 percent black, 6 percent Asian, 7 percent Hispanic. So in the conversation here, race has certainly become an issue. And, you know, if we're, if we're being absolutely honest, there is a, a, a small segment of the population that is for this Buckhead city uh, that is conservative, Republican, and has no qualms about, frankly, sticking it to the city of Atlanta simply because it is largely African-American and run by Democrats. So race absolutely plays a significant role. However, I would underline that the bigger issue is money, uh, and that the color that is really the underlying issue here is green. Uh, because what yeah. you have in this part of town is a uh, 40, 20 percent, 40, 20 percent of the city's population that covers about 40 percent of the city's budget. And there are many people, black, white, whatever color, who feel that they should be getting more of their money's worth. And that's also uh, happening here, Kira. Steve, we will so continue this conversation. It's an important one. We want to talk about healing the divide there. And also, we'll follow to see if indeed this resolution passes right along with you. National correspondent Steve Osinsami from Atlanta for us. Uh, thank you so much, Steve. You're very welcome. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.